So in the last video, we learned about rate constants, and we know every single reaction has its own rate constant. And the higher the rate constant, the faster the chemical reaction. For example, let's say this chemical reaction has a large rate constant. And this chemical reaction has a small rate constant. What does that mean? Well, if this chemical reaction has a large rate constant, then that means this reaction has a fast rate. Many moles of products are made per second. This has a fast rate. But this chemical reaction has a small rate constant. So what does that mean? Well, a low rate constant means a slow reaction. So this is a very slow reaction where very little moles of products are made per second. So we know this chemical reaction has its own rate constant, which describes how fast this reaction occurs. But how do we determine exactly what the rate constant is? Well, we can determine what the rate constant is for a chemical reaction using this Arrhenius equation. The rate constant of a chemical reaction equals this pre-exponential factor, and then we have this ideal gas constant, the temperature, and the activation energy. So therefore, we know what this pre-exponential factor is for this chemical reaction, and we know the temperature that this chemical reaction is occurring under, and the activation energy of this chemical reaction. If we know all those terms, we can determine what the rate constant is for this chemical reaction. And don't worry too much about this pre-exponential factor. It's a complex and you'll usually be given it, but it's related to how the molecules interact in the geometry and the how many... Uh, interactions per second, etc. But don't worry about it. Usually you'll be given that. In this video, I want to focus on temperature and activation energy. So we know from everyday experience, if we increase the temperature, the chemical reaction will occur faster. That's something that should be intuitive. And we know that from this equation. We see the way the math works, just the way the math works. If we increase the temperature, we increase the rate constant. So that makes sense. If we increase the temperature, of, of that this reaction is occurring under, if we increase the temperature, that will increase the rate constant. And if the rate constant increases, that means the reaction will occur faster. And that makes sense. That's consistent from our everyday experience. So we know that's how temperature affects the rate constant. But what about this activation energy? And what is this activation energy? Well, we know for this chemical reaction to occur, to, to go from these reactants and convert them to these products, Something important to realize is we first need to reach this intermediate, this transition state. So for these reactants to reach, to convert into these products, first we must form this intermediate. Then once we form this intermediate, then we can form the products. And usually this, these intermediates, these transition states are high in energy. So we can, we can explain this, we can visualize this using one of these reaction coordinates, one of these graphs. And essentially what happens is we have our reactants, so we have our reactants, and these reactants have a certain amount of energy. They're, they're, they have a certain amount of energy. And then we know the reactants react, forming this intermediate. And then once they form this intermediate, we could represent that up here. So this intermediate, this transition state, is high in energy. And we know it's high in energy because we have this formal charge of negative one, this localized negative charge, which is high in electric potential energy. So this is a high energy transition state. And we can represent this transition state up here. We see it's higher in energy. So first we have the reactants. Then they react to form this high energy transition state. Then once we form this high energy transition state, then it can collapse to form our products. And we could draw our products here. And let's say in this example, let's say the products happen to be a lower energy state than the reactants. So that's our reaction coordinate. That's how this reaction occurs. We have our reactants. They react, forming this high energy transition state. Then they, they form our products, our lower energy products. But something important to realize is for this reaction to occur, we must reach this high energy transition state. We must somehow provide enough energy to reach this transition state. Because if originally we're at this reactants and we want to reach this transition state, we need a source of energy. We need energy to reach to get to this high energy transition state. So that energy required to, to reach that transition state is referred to as the activation energy. So therefore, this reaction has an activation energy. It has a certain amount of energy that's required to reach this transition state for this reaction to occur. And something important to realize is the higher the activation energy, the lower the rate constant, the slower the reaction. And that's just the way the math works. And again, we see this reaction 
has a high energy transition state. We see this is a high activation energy. To go from reactants to the transition state, we need a lot of energy. We, this is a high energy transition state. So therefore, this reaction would have a high activation energy. It would require a lot of energy to reach this transition state. So therefore, we have a high activation energy in the way the math works that translates to a low rate constant. So this has, is a slow reaction. This reaction is very slow with the slow rate constant. And that makes sense. If we have this high energy hurdle, then this reaction should occur slowly. However, something interesting to note is that we can also use an enzyme to catalyze this chemical reaction to make this reaction occur faster. So how does that happen? Well, remember this high energy transition state with this localized negative charge? We can have an enzyme. And maybe this enzyme is made out of amino acid residues with these positive charges. So maybe these, these positively charged amino acid residues can stabilize this high energy transition state. So if we stabilize this high energy transition state, the transition state is lower in energy. It's a lower energy transition state. So therefore, this enzyme stabilizes this transition state, so we have a lower energy transition state. So therefore, we have a lower activation energy. There's a less amount of energy that's required to reach this transition state. So we have a lower activation energy. So if we have a lower activation energy, the way the math works, we have a higher rate constant and we have a faster rate of reaction. And that's what enzymes do. Enzymes increase the rate constant to make a reaction occur faster. And, they, and that's what enzymes do. They make chemical reactions occur faster. So this enzyme stabilized the transition state, so we have a lower energy transition state, so therefore we had a lower activation energy, less energy required to reach that transition state. So, so that's how enzymes work. But the point is, Every single chemical reaction has its own rate constant that describes how fast that chemical reaction occurs. And if you want to determine what that rate constant is, you can use the Serrhenius equation. And the terms that really are important are the temperature. The temperature in fact impacts the, the rate constant, the, the rate of the reaction, and the activation energy. If we have a large activation energy, a huge energetic hurdle, then we'll have a low rate constant and a slow chemical reaction. However, if we have a low activation energy, a low energetic hurdle, we have a higher rate constant and a faster chemical reaction. And that's what enzymes do. Enzymes increase the rate constant and therefore make a chemical reaction occur faster. So this equation is referred to as the Arrhenius equation. And in the previous video, we explained more about rate constants and kinetics, and I have a link of that video below.